Because four man is less than five is the TLDR uh, immortal. Seems very good. It's got a bird on one. It's got a glittering wish to find Jeskai Ascendancy. It's got some serum visions to cantrip in case things go wrong. Looks like we're gonna get to test our Death Shadow game plan nice and nice and early here. Sylvan carry added was a great draw here. Replace our dead mana dork. I'm gonna get new monitors for the desktop. They don't want to break the bank. Do you have a brand new account? I have a bunch of HP uh, HP monitors that I really like. I'm playing against Mill. Okay, cute. So we don't want to crack any fetch lands then. Okay. Um. I think I want to just glittering wish here. I'm just gonna crack this. They have archive trap. They have archive trap. I think I just want to do this because this way, if I if I sleight of hand into a just guy ascendancy, I can play it right away this turn while they're tapped out. Grab nagging thoughts. Go ahead and glittering wish. Maybe I should have taken Manamorphos there because they have the archive trap. Yep. If they have a fetch land here, yeah, this might actually be close because we actually need to draw a lot of our deck to kill them. Uh, Modern's such a shit show. Just <laughs> can't beat Mill because we need to draw through our deck. Oh, that's a tilt. They had the archive trap. I guess I do get to get back a bunch of Fate Stitchers next turn, most likely. You have two more Fate Stitchers in our deck. For fuck's sake. <laughs> we actually just can't beat this card. This is... This is why we don't usually play modern with my own money. I'm just gonna concede the match. Move on to their next one. It's not worth my time. God, I can't imagine being someone that's trying to test modern for the Pro Tour and trying to do it on Magic Online. That's gotta be miserable. Thank you. Magic Online has encountered an error and closed. All right. <sighs> we found the matchup Mill is good against, right? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, we up I upgraded my center monitor to a 1440p screen, so. Uh, 
That's just how Leonard goes. Your fringe deck loses to other fringe decks. Like, heck, your tier one decks lose to random fringe decks a lot of the time. So, I have a wear tear in my sideboard that could kill that orb. The problem is that I don't have enough mana to do that while not untapping and burying myself out of the game. Like, because they had the trap and all the other things, by the time I generated enough mana to, like, get this out and cast it, we were going to just not have any cards in our deck to actually combo them. That's just how it goes, you know? You're much, you're much better off just conceding, taking your matches that are impossible and just like conceding them and going and doing something else with your time rather than sitting there and being frustrated. I'd love to play first. That's sad too, because that hand was very good. That hand's very good too, actually. If we're playing, if we're queued into blue black mill for a second time, I'm going to shut the stream off just to, just to set the expectations. Just to set the expectations. Yeah, Jarvis, it's gotta be just like. <laughs> Extra land here is actually really good for us. So I get to shock this in. I get to go ahead and play a Sylvan carry added here. And then I'm going to go ahead and Abundant Growth. This uh, Oh, maybe I should have fetched a basic. Basic Forest Bird probably means Ponza. So I probably should have fetched Basic Island here. I probably should have fetched Basic Island there. Yeah, I think that was a mistake to not, not fetch Basic Island that turn. Because if I fetched Basic Island, I'd be able to play Glittering Wish through... Noxious Survival is our best draw here. Let's us combo them on three. So I'm going to fetch a basic island here. Then I get to go ahead and go green, white, cast Glittering Wish. Grab Jeskai Ascendancy. I could have, there might have been merit to like trying to like go even faster. I could have Glittering Wished last turn to try and Ascendancy this turn, but if they kill my land or my bird, I don't get to combo this turn anyways. So I think, I think this is what I want to do. That's not, that's not what someone said. So I'm going to go ahead and just ban you too. Get out of here. All right, so hopefully they're dead. I guess they could have this could be a devoted druid deck. It looks like it, it did look for a second there, like they were. They could have been a, a what's it called, like a, a blood moon punza deck. But it's looking more like they're a they're a collected company deck. Hey, Anaronics with the cheers. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Ooh, that's that's the nuts. Get to madness this right away. So this is how the combo executes for those for those that haven't seen this combo before. Jeez, you just jumped up another one. So, so how this combo works is Jeskai Ascendancy, every time we cast a spell, untaps our creatures and gives them plus one, plus one. So basically every spell we cast while we have mana dorks out generates two mana. So one mana spells net us one mana and two mana spells are free. All of our creatures keep getting larger and then eventually we're going to find a Glittering Wish to Glittering Wish for the card Flesh Blood in our sideboard to deal damage equal to one of our creatures power directly to our opponent alternatively we can eventually draw into the card fate stitcher to flip that out and tap down our opponent's blockers while also attacking them for a large amount 
So I'd like to cast this with the mana I have floating. And this is going to trigger Jeskai Ascendancy again. So we get to untap these things again and we get to loot. Don't need more lands at this point. Nagging Thoughts resolves. Looks at the top two. So this is actually kind of interesting. Um, I think I actually want Sleight of Hand rather than another Jeskai Ascendancy at this point because the Jeskai Ascendancy actually loses us a card overall because it's just going to loot. It's not going to do more than that. I'm going to bottom... I'm going to bottom both of these. I don't really need either of those. What are we looking for at this point? We're looking for Fate Stitchers and Glittering Wishes. If my opponent doesn't have any interaction, they should be pretty, pretty close to just dead here. Again, just get to loot through these lands. And Mana Morphose is actually great because it nets us two mana because it costs two, it makes two. Etc. Etc. So, I have a little bit of clicking to go through here. One of the reasons why I've played this deck a lot off stream is because it's going to be tough for me to read read the chat while while I'm comboing because the combo is kind of click intensive. But I felt like playing this deck, so we're going to do it. What advantage does this have over Storm? Probably none. I like playing it more. It's more of a puzzle deck. I don't find Storm an interesting deck to play. And this deck is fun to play. Uh, I don't really need another Ascendancy at this point or that. I play Magic to solve fun puzzles, and Storm isn't a fun puzzle for me to solve. Also, I'd really like to draw a Silence, because Silence would let me, like, there we go. So this will let us guarantee that my opponent's not going to be able to do anything else this turn and interrupt my combo. So I'm going to go ahead and Silence here. Your opponent can't cast spells. One of the, if you're looking for like actual answers for like things that are like realistic, um, this deck is better than Storm in the aspect that it, um, it's not weak to graveyard hate. Its combo doesn't rely on graveyard hate and it kills them the same turn. So that's, that is an actual real upside. This deck does not lose to Graveyard Hate like Storm often loses to Graveyard Hate. I use my Graveyard a little bit for things like Fate Stitcher, but I don't actually need Fate Stitcher to combo kill my opponent. Mana's not my bottleneck, Brick House. Like, realistically, with the cards I have in my hand, I could probably just, like, cast whatever I want and, like, loot through and be fine. This might be a Phyrexian Revoker. Hopefully it's just a devoted druid and they're hoping we don't kill them this turn. I'm looking for cards like Glittering Wish and um, Nagging Thought so I can generate some actual card advantage. Is what I'm looking for at this point in the game. Mana, mana is not my bottleneck. Cards, cards is my bottleneck. You are better against Leyline because you do just get to... Uh, you do just get to attack them. Fate Stitcher is a free discard. Both of those are bad. So now Fate Stitcher is a way that we can actually win the game too. So Fate Stitcher taps my opponent's... Can tap my opponent's blockers here. So now, like, my Bird of Paradise is going to get to attack for lethal. Opponent sees how we're going to attack them through the Selfless Spirit. All right, so how do I want to board here? I think Silence probably isn't that good. So my board plan against decks that board in constant base disruption is just board the three Silence out and board the three Abrupt Decay in. We still have cards like Fiery Justice and Wear Tear to wish for. I don't think this is a Swan Song matchup. So a majority of the time, your bottleneck mid combo is not cards and Glittering Wish acts as those extra cards. And when you're not comboing, Ancestral Vision is much worse than cards like Opt, Serum Visions and Sleight of Hand is what it comes down to essentially. So people like there's that there's this black card that returns every card you've discarded from your hand to your hand and like that's just like a card that like sure it's great mid combo but mid combo isn't where you generally need the extra help you need help getting set up and being consistent to get there this hand is nuts turn one bird turn two jk this 
Fiend is very good. It needs a Noxious Revival to just, like, be totally insane. I might... Depending on, like, what they go... If they play Devoted Druid on 2, R2 probably needs to be Bird plus Decay. But if they don't play Devoted Druid on 2, I'm probably just going to jam the JAC. Although I guess there's merit to holding the Ascendancy so that way they can't get, like, Pride Mage and kill it. I'm not really sure what Gifts Ungiven does. Like, what, what problem are you looking to solve by playing that card? Alright, so am I supposed to just Serum Visions looking for another land? Yeah, I think that's right. I think I'm just going to go Serum Visions looking for a land and then play Ascendancy next turn. I think, like, four looks at a land with this, right? Tilt. I actually kind of want both of these, right? I'm going to draw the op next turn. Because then next turn, I can go play Jeskai Ascendancy, cast op, untap my birds, loot the Fate Stitcher, start comboing. I think that's playing a little bit too scared, Jarvis. I think there's a good chance they're dead this turn. They need to have like Reclamation Sage off their collected company. I guess they could have like something weird like Spell Caller too. They could have an Abrupt Decay of their own here, I suppose. If I play this in paper, yeah, this is one of the decks I'm considering playing in Indianapolis next month. Hopefully this is just a collected company. I guess they could hit, uh, like, Eidolon. They can Coco into Pontiff. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. Pontiff will be really good here. Uh, India is modern. If they brick on hate cards with this, they're likely dead. They don't have mana for that. They don't have mana for that. Right? They don't have mana for that. Is this a summoning sec? So I get to loot here, discard the Fate Stitcher. Now I'm looking for, yeah, just more, more things to, to draw cards with here. So now I get to go ahead and put this Fate Stitcher into play. And I get to go ahead and untap my bird. I get to go ahead and make blue, make green, cast the sleight of hand. Just good clean turn three kill here. Yes, they're not they're not one hundred percent dead here yet, but are like they're likely very dead. Would love another just guy ascendancy. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna make green. I'm gonna make blue. And now here our bottleneck is kind of cards. So we get to go ahead and play this Glittering Wish now, and this Glittering Wish is going to go get Scar Scale Ritual. And this Abrupt Decay, because I don't really care about that, because they're going to die. Just good, clean, magical cards, right? So grab Scar Scale Ritual, uh, make blue, make green, untap this. Uh, make white, make a scar scale ritual. It's a minus one, minus one counter on one of my sad little birds. <laughs> Anironics with the robot cheers as we, we just do good, clean, modern things on turn three here. Yeah, opponent, opponent's had enough. They're gonna, the, writing, the writing's on the walls, they understand they're dead. Yeah, the Mystic Enforcer, A. With the more cheers. Thanks, bud. I appreciate the bits. You keep, you keep Mr. Declan well fed. He's a big boy, like Steve. 
<laughs> and head on into the next one here. The opponent had some hits on that company that could have stopped us there, but I think I like, like making them have it there. Seems pretty good. It, uh, double gemstone mine kind of sucks, but potentially as a turn three kill. You're always professional type plays. I almost feel like I know what I'm doing with this deck now. The first time we played it, I fumbled and bumbled a ton. But this, I almost feel like I'm getting, I'm getting the hang of what we're doing here. Uh, one bit is one penny, so 2,800 bits is $28. So the gemstone mines in here are actually part of the reason why we have uh, we have copies of uh, abundant growth in our deck. It uh, allows you to kind of save save your things, which is nice. Uh, I've played like seven leagues with this deck, and I've four one or that I four one or three two all of them. Democracy points. <laughs> he, he's just cashing them, you know. When when Anironix decides that, that there's a deck they want to see played, we play the deck. This was actually, and again, like this is why people ask me, like, why do I do the donation deck list thing? This was originally one of Anironix's donation deck lists, like. This is not a deck I probably would have ever touched if someone hadn't sent me, you know, the $12 to play it in the league. And I'm really glad we played it because it's really sweet. Yeah, this is one of the decks I'm considering playing at the Open in Indianapolis next weekend. The deck list is on your screen. If you are on mobile, type exclamation point deck in chat and you'll be able to find it there. Tap out for a mana creature, please, so I can kill you. Please tap out so you can die. Hey, all right, hopefully they're dead. There's a world where we brick off here, I guess. Probably not with that sleight of hand, though. So we go doop, doop, doop. Just guy ascendancy. Play this. Play blue, play this. This is going to untap my guy. I get to loot here. Fate Stitcher is a free discard. That's a great draw. Doesn't matter what we get here, neither of them are spells. Return this to play, make blue. Cast this up. And now, every spell we cast generates two mana, so two mana spells are free, one mana spells generate an extra mana. Bottom that. And now again, our bottleneck at this point is kind of, um, kind of cards. But Glittering Wish here, Glittering Wish goes and gets Scarscale Ritual, which draws two cards on top of looting a couple of times here, so it's probably not going to be an issue. How, how unfair your deck is, opponent. This deck is just so unfair. Scarscale Ritual. Uh, yeah, I don't really need to silence. They don't have any free things that they can do. Blue, untap this. We're not quite in the range of our mana being trivial, but we're getting there quickly. Noxious Survival probably isn't something I need. Air vision, sure. Tap their Burrell. That way, eventually, this Fate Stitcher is going to attack for lethal. I think they're deterministically dead at this point. If not, they're pretty close. Green. White. Cast this. And this actually nets us two mana. Yeah, so the mana is no longer a problem. You just keep drawing cards, green, white. 
and make uh, green, go and untap this, go ahead and make blue. That you use the hotkey for okay or pass, but not yes, no, which is also an option of timing out. I didn't know that actually. What's the hotkey for? What's the hotkey for yes, no? I usually don't have issues with timing out, but that's good to know about. Let me cast this glittering wish, which loots. Yes, going off with this deck is a blast. I love it. It's more, and one of the things like why I really love this deck, but I'm not a huge fan of Storm is like, this deck's kind of a puzzle, right? Like the way you combo with this deck is different almost every single time. Sure, at a certain point, like all of your cards, like eventually you get to the point where like, oh, they're deterministically dead, more just like clicking to click, right? But like a lot of the time, you, the way you start the game and you get your setup in is different from game to game. Whereas like Storm, you're just like, all right, put my pooper into play and then like cast my gifts and give and kill you. Now attack with these. And they're dead. All right, so Storm, we bring in Silence and the Swan Song as ways to interact with them. Uh, Noxious Revival's okay. The journey is what counts. Yeah, yeah, I'm all about I'm all about the journey. I think maybe trimming one. Usually trim like one opt and one noxious revival. Could be I could see two ups. I often you just like like I didn't need to blood my opponent that game, but it made the game shorter. So like I, I used the blood because it made the game shorter. I don't want to fight this matchup on the axes of fighting with their 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 creature, so I don't bring the abrupt decays in. So we just go up a silence, up a swan song. If you've never silenced someone in response to them casting past in flames, let me tell you about things that feel excellent. Silencing someone in response to their past in flames is just like it's like a plus Magic the Gathering. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm supposed to cut abundant growth. Maybe this opt is better than this. Yeah, I'm gonna leave opt in and cut the abundant growth because like these games go quick. If they if they have blood moon, I might bring the abundant growth back in, but a lot of times they don't. Just watch Storm lose that it's okay, right? Our deck is fair and honest, okay? We attacked with creatures for lethal, okay? We attacked with creatures for lethal. That is a mystic enforcer. That's our that's our let's wish for this against Death Shadow and hope for the best. Along with a bunch of Myrian Crusaders and Chameleon Colossuses that we get to board in. Yeah, so we can Glittering Wish for Mystic Enforcer. This he end is not good enough. It doesn't have a fast combo kill and it doesn't have silence to slow my opponent down. Uh, this hand has mana dorks and it has a cantrip in it, so I'm gonna keep it. Just needs a just kai ascendancy, basically. If our opponent has a turn three, we can't interact with them, but like, it's just how it is. Is how it is, how it is. Sometimes they keep more reactive hands to interact with us because we're also a fast combo deck. Can this deck make it 2020 faster than Turbo Depths? <laughs> Another part of the reason I want to play this deck in Indianapolis is because I could play my, my Altered Birds of Paradise. They're so beautiful. They are so beautiful to me. Do, do, do. Silence or JAC? Tilt. Oh, I can't trip. Looks like mostly cantrips, right? So, like, when you don't draw the cards you want, you generally draw cantrips.
This deck can theoretically combo off turn two. It's very rare. Your turn twos are very rare. They involve Birds of Paradise into Just Kai Ascendancy on two into Noxious Revival to get your combo started. Abundant Growth. Um, so I think I start by casting Serum Visions, right? And just seeing what's up. Because if there's a... I'm going to say if there's a... What's it called on top of my deck? A... Uh, silence, we could possibly just Abundant Growth into it. I think I'm going to go bottom, bottom here. And go shock this in and just like hope they don't kill me. Do I have my birds somewhere handy? That's a good question. I'm going to auto pass while we die and go get my birds. I'll be right back. Oh, I had to take a game action. Oh. Are we deterministically dead? Feels like we're deterministically dead. Did they fix the control Z bug yet? No, of course not. All right. Ah, uh, that's the wrong one. Webcam large. Well, my opponent finishes killing me here. These are, these are my birds. They're wonderful. Aren't they nice? I like my birds. Have you heard about my birds? I said a buh buh birds. Buh birds, a word. I said a bird. All right, we can concede now. I think that hand was fine to keep. You know, we we turned three them in the first game. They turned three to us this game. Fair's fair. Bears, bears, fair opponent. I, I accept. Hopefully we have a mana dork into a just guy ascendancy. These are, are these eighth edition these are eighth edition birds. Seems reasonable. Not amazing, but reasonable. Go. We got two pieces, two two silences to interact with my opponent. We've got a uh, combo piece and some cantrips. It'd be a shame if they've got forked bolted. We actually played slivers in Legacy recently. Find that archive on my YouTube channel. I use his glass coasters. I really don't like the artwork on the original Alpha Beta birds. This is my favorite bird artwork by a mile. Get a few looks at uh, Just Kai Ascendancy here. We could find Glittering Wish with this one or our draw step as well, and then set up the kill for the following turn, potentially, if we also find a land. So let me carry out as a good draw. Perfect. All right, return opponent. 
Please tap out so I can kill you. So Wisps is not only you draw a card, but it also, um, what's the word I'm searching for? It also, uh, it generates a mana because it untaps the creature you play it on. Get remanded here. Yep. Return opponent. It's a shame we didn't have another land. If we had another land, we could go Silence into Ascendancy into Wisps. But I don't think it's worth burning a Silence there just to, like, force the Ascendancy to resolve. Because, like, they could go Creature into Ritual here, and if they go Creature into Ritual, I want to Silence after that Ritual. Cerulean Whip says, target creature becomes blue until end of turn, untap that creature, and then draw a card. <laughs> Modern staple Cerulean Wisps. Come on, chat. So again, a big problem with cards like Ideas Unbound is they're great when you're comboing and they're really bad. They're really bad when you are just like trying to set up your combo. So by playing cards like Nagging Thoughts that generate you card advantage mid combo, you are better against other things. You're better at getting set up as opposed to just like being good mid combo. All right, well, unless they have something like Spell Pierce here, which is pretty uncommon for them, they should be dead. So this cost me one mana, but it's going to generate me three mana. Your thoughts on telling time? I mean, it's like worse than the one mana cantrips. It's probably worse than anticipate. It's definitely worse than anticipate too, and that's worse than the one mana cantrips. I I don't I don't know what the rest of your deck looked like, but like if you're playing a bunch of faithless lootings, then you need the card advantage from Ideas Unbound. But when you're playing more natural cantrips, you don't really need that extra help. They have a dispel. Okay, well now I feel kind of bad because I could have played this Silence, but I wasn't expecting a dispel out of them. Well, that's. That's awkward. All right. Um, Cause like now I'm now I'm down a card, so I could have I could have played around that. Huh. Okay. It's interesting. Hopefully that doesn't cost us the game. It could potentially cost us the game. So I'm gonna make. I think I'm gonna make red blue here. Nah, white blue. Serum Visions is great. Um, do I want to play Jeskai Ascendancy or do I want to stay card neutral for now? I think I want to stay card neutral for now. Although I guess this solves all of my mana problems now until forever. And then it like lets me see a bunch of things. Yeah, this is probably fine to just play out here. All right, let's go blue. Blue, cast this. Yep. And we're looking for, so at this point, when you're comboing with this deck, your goal is always to identify whatever your bottleneck is going to be in any given game. So right now my bottleneck is not mana. We're generating more mana than we could ever possibly use. Our bottleneck this game is cards. 
So when our bottleneck is cards, we're looking for things like Glittering Wish and Nagging Thoughts because those are cards that can generate us card advantage when we're behind on cards. So I'm gonna top this and top this. There's the Glittering Wish that we wanted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make mana here. Cast the Serum Visions. Cloud post levels mana. Yeah, like we have we have way more mana than we could ever spend this game currently. So we're gonna loot. Loot. Oh, I knew the opt was there. Okay, so I shouldn't have looted that second time because I knew the opt was there. There's a nagging thoughts, perfect. So we'll go bottom. Bottom here. I'll make white, make blue. Opponent should be dead at this point. Just a matter of clicking through. We get to loot. And again, there's another nagging thought. Sweet. Nagging thoughts generates us card advantage because we discard it to loot, but then it draws us a card. Hey, Lythanol RS with the brand new Twitch Prime support. Thank you very much and welcome. We are going to kill them with the Birds of Paradise. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Yeah, thanks, bud. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying the offline stuff. It's a good reminder for everyone, if you didn't catch all the stream today or at any time, you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. All my stuff gets archived there. Yes, correct, actually. We can just get flesh blood at this point. I actually don't even need to keep looting, right? I just have this, I have this problem where, like, if you keep telling me I can draw cards, I'm going to keep drawing cards, right? I have an addiction, and it is drawing magic cards. I have an addiction, and it is drawing Magic the Gathering cards. I mean, the bird's still gonna attack for lethal, right? Choose target creature you control, deal damage to that one. All right, and now my bird gets to get very angry and attack. Rawr, this is my bird of paradise. My bird of paradise is amazing. Rawr. So flesh blood, we didn't actually need to flesh blood them. We just did it for good measure. This is the way this is the way this deck can win the game without using combat to win the game. It deals damage, it has a creature we control deal damage equal to its power to my opponent. All right, got him. Got him. All right, two and one. Two and one, conceded the first match to Mill because our deck needs to draw a bunch of cards so we're never beating Mill in a million years. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what is the best way for this deck to attack Grixis Death Shadow and the Death Shadow decks in general, like the green-black decks. So, Mirian Crusader and Chameleon Claws and Mystic Enforcer, those are cards that are like really good against them. I have no idea why you would ever want to play a Grip Shot in this deck. This deck cannot, cannot beat infinite life as constructed. Damn it, Bob. Speaking of Grixis Shadow, I think Bob's been playing five color shadow. Traverse for Swamp. Yeah, Traverse for Swamp, All right? He's playing five color shadow. It's a good draw. It's a good draw. Um, how do you feel about time walking, Bob? I think I just want to time walk Bob here. Nice. Yeah, Sealy deck's very powerful. 
Very powerful. Yeah, the the original list that I, I started with had Mystic Speculation in it, but it's just like, it's so bad, and you just don't need it. Like, the Gain Infinite Health Kitchen Finks deck just like isn't really a deck anymore. Player land. All right, good boy. This deck, this is a hard matchup for us, so I'm excited to try out my pile of Mirian Crusaders here. I mean, don't don't play around things you can't beat. Can't beat Liliana the Veil. Don't play around it. He has two copies of Liliana the Veil. If he has one, he has one. Sure, has a Liliana the Veil. We get to get Jeskai Ascendancy into play this turn, so if he doesn't have one of his two copies of Abrupt Decay, we'll be in a good spot. Probably the Sahili deck. So hoping for no... Hoping for no abrupt decay here. Terminate's also pretty good here because he's be able to kill this Fate Stitcher. Fate Stitcher was a good draw since they killed our since they killed our thing. Silence. Silence. Tilt. I'm gonna start with Sleight of Hand here, I think. See what we draw. Because if we hit a Silence, I wanna be able to do that. Abundant Growth, Glittering Wish. We go ahead and cast Glittering Wish here. In response to this trigger, untap here. Feels like a terminate. Yep. Huh. Need this bird, right? What am I getting here? Mystic Enforcer's probably not good enough, right? I guess it's pretty good. We'll be a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the plan, right? Go. Maybe I'm supposed to hold the bird to play around Inquisition. Play around like Inquisition plus uh, plus Liliana. Have a battle rage. Yeah, that sucks. Um, all right, I think we have to try and combo them, right? I get three looks at a get three looks at a uh, fate stitcher here. Need fate stitcher plus a card to continue comboing with. So pretty unlike pretty unlikely to hit get get there here. 
I'm in this land. Yeah, I mean, that's the spell. So we got two looks at a Fate Stitcher here. This technically gives me two more looks at a Fate Stitcher. Or one more look. Might just be one more look. Blue, blue, probably. I believe we're now dead. Oh, was I supposed to maybe put nagging thoughts on top of my deck? Not actually sure how that works. Yeah, we're dead. The battle, battle rage did it. So no discard from them, but pretty strong start. All right, so what we're doing, we're boarding these out, boarding in Crusader, Colossus, and I think I want these abrupt decays too, just to slow their clock down. I think I want to cut Cerulean Wisps and, huh, do I want to cut my Fate Stitchers or my Birds? I feel like Bird is good for powering out Mirian Crusader. Like my Colossus and stuff. Let's try this. I think I want to leave the Noxious Revivals in just so I can like grab my Crusaders back after they... Grab my Crusaders back after they discard them. So, I think we could have beaten one less piece of interaction out of our opponent that game, but the Liliana into the... Removal spell for the carry at it, or into the removal spell for the bird, into removal spell for the fate stitcher, just a little bit too much. Yeah, I tried mentor and it wasn't good enough because they just have so much spot removal. The problem is that their spot removal is good against our combo, so they're not boarding their spot removal out in a matchup like this. So I think I'd rather have threats that they just can't kill. I tried four mentors, four, two young pyromancer on my sideboard, and I just wasn't happy with it. Whichever one you have more fun with is the answer. Same seems fine. It's got turn one bird and it's got a bunch of bunch of cantrips here to try and hit land drops. I mean, like, I don't know if that's really true, Cruel Turp. Like, well, what is what would probe have helped me win that game? Probably not. Like, what are what is missing probe do for me? Like, it helps my faster combo turns, but, like, honestly, the games I'm winning with fast combos, I don't feel like those are my hard games. My hard games feel like the ones like this against extra my opponents are heavily interactive. Yes, that, that one I agree with. Like, having a critical mass of cards, like, Treasure Cruise would be great in these matchups. 10 out of 10 agree that Cruise is a card that we miss. I don't think, uh, what's it called is a card that we miss. Like, Probe would be nice, but, like, I don't think it, that's a good one to draw. That's a couple of bricks. Uh-oh. Ding, fries are done. Get Hollowed Fountain here, probably. Yes, the Serum Vision looking for another land. Stomping Ground, Nagging Thoughts. I don't really want that. I think I'm going to take... Are going to take the stomping ground? I'm just going to bottom both of those, actually. Now, just okay, so you're, you're being banned because you didn't explain why it makes you, makes you more powerful and more consistent. Again, when you're making changes to decks, I want to know why... I get it, you get to play a 56 card deck, that's nice, that helps you combo faster, but again, the matches that are hard for me aren't the ones where I need to combo quickly. The games I'm having a hard time with are the ones I'm getting ground out in. Yes, 56 cards is great, but like, that's, 
that's not like the problem my deck is having the problem i'm having with this deck yeah nice nice escalation nerd no instance and sorceries here all right if we get lily on a next turn we're gonna be sad it's not about disagreeing with me you're gonna get banned for saying that it's not about disagreeing with me. You have to articulate yourself. It's about not articulating yourself. If you're not articulating yourself when you disagree with me, you're just yelling at me and calling me dumb. Like, you're just hearing yourself in chat. Saying you're wrong and not giving me a reason why I'm wrong isn't creating discussion. It's uninteresting. Yeah, yeah, Cruz, I agree with. I agree Cruz was a big hit for this deck because Cruz helps you grind through matches like this one that we're playing right now. Like, Cruz would be awesome in this in this deck to help these matchups that are hard. Gitaxian Probe doesn't help my matchups that are hard. I agree it would be good in the deck, but it's not actively fixing a problem that I currently have. What do you think of the bug control deck at 5 I think it's awesome if you don't play against Valakut or Tron. I think if you play against Valakut or Tron, you're going to hate yourself. Ah, did your thought sees. At least we have Crusader plus Abundant Growth here, I guess. Dig would be okay. I feel like I just want critical masses of cards, though. Um, huh. So I'm going to bottom this, top this, and go wish for Mystic Enforcer. Do they need to have another thought seize here? Uh, Bob got a Death Shadow with the Traverse. Hey, guess what? Here's my 6-6. Six, six. Here's my 6-6. Six, six. Your move, Yugi boy. Your move, Yugi boy. How do we feel about my 6-6, six, six, Bob? Uh, that gets to take my abrupt decay, that's sad. I like my abrupt decay, Bob. Do you have a stub? All right, your turn. I'm not attacking, so I don't want to die to team or battle rage. And next turn, if they don't have decay here, I can cast abundant growth and one-shot them. Another piece of removal. It's pretty good. Confirm abrupt decay. Do da do da. All these cards are really bad. Oh, the do da day. Boom, 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 boom. I like this deck a lot. This is a deck I'm considering playing in Indianapolis next month. That's actually a pretty good one because we can use it to just like tap his blockers. I think I'm supposed to play around. I think I'm supposed to play around TBR here because I'm just like in such a good spot with this Mystic Enforcer. I'm just supposed to wait. That's actually a good draw too, because it lets me flip. Let's me flip an abrupt decay back on top of my deck that they binned earlier. Camp down lady, sing this song. Do da do da bum 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 Do I have more fate stitchers in my deck? Is that a real plan? Is fate stitching these creatures down a real plan? I don't know if this is a real plan or not, but it kinda seems cute. I'm gonna need to rethink how I board here. I don't know what else I wanna cut. Hey, Juju Gizby, with the 20 month resubscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent's mulligan to five. Okay. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying I have a chance. That's all I need. All I need's a chance. Rax, he has a land. The this is a bad matchup. These Death Shadow decks are hard matchups for this deck. These are these are the matches you're looking to dodge. I could get punished for leading on this land if they soft stub this abundant growth here, but soft stubbing the abundant growth is a little bit aggressive. Deal. So with the abundant growth, this this thing can tap for mana without uh, without losing anything. Uh, no reason to block here. If they have some kind of instant, they can get us. They can like abrupt decay my abundant growth and like or or cycle a street wraith. Well, I'm glad you're having a good time, Caddy. Glad you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. That's why I stream. Just here to hang out, play magic, have a good time. Liliana's gonna suck here. Hmm, that's not a Liliana. That's good for us. Hey, there's a donation. Check X. What's the donation message there? Sorry for the inconvenience earlier. I gave you the incorrect. This is the correct version. Got it. Thank you. I'll update that in the thing. Uh, so we're going to put this JAC gift should be here. All right. So what do I want to do this turn? I probably just want to play Ascendancy, right? And then play this and we'll fetch out a shock land. It's unfortunate that I don't have any... It's unfortunate that we're flooded here, right? Un, unfortunate. Bob Mulligan to five, though, so, like, you know, little column A, little column B. Yep. Be unfortunate for us. They have a Death Shadow, too. Traverse for Death Shadow, maybe? Yep. All right, we're gonna need a live draw now. It's kind of awkward that I don't have a way to kill this Tarmogoyf in my sideboard. Maybe I should still have an Abrupt Decay in there. It's very possible that that should have like a Maelstrom Pulse or an Abrupt Decay in my sideboard. 16 lands, Enironic. 16 lands. Fiery Justice kills the Shadow, but it doesn't kill the Goyf, and the Goyf is the problem at the moment. I just, like, find a Mirian Crusader. This is a chump block for a turn. It's probably not good enough. That's that's exactly what we wanted, that one right there. Um, so I play this. Go ahead. Glittering Wish for Mystic Enforcer. And then we get to Abrupt Decay this and Jam Enforcer to lock the Shadow down, hopefully. So I'm going to block here, hoping they Battle Rage. <laughs> Man, got lands chat. This is only a 3 3. Oh, maybe I should have played a fetch land. Not only does it thin my deck, but it gets me towards. 
It gets me towards, uh, what, what's it called sooner? Holy shit. God, this is unreal. So I should have, do I have any fetchables left actually? I'm not actually sure. Let's find out. I think I have one left. I should have checked. I have two left. Yep. There are 16 lands in our deck. <laughs> well, that was the last fetchable land. I'm playing this because it'll be the seventh card in our discard pile for the Mystic Enforcer to have threshold. Oh, I have Gemstone at one, too. Yeah, you're right. The fetching the thin is insignificant. The fetching to thin is insignificant. I realize it like felt bad there to like draw what we drew, but like, but you shouldn't fetch to thin. It's just not good. It's just not good math. They have Dismember. It's kind of funny. I think we're dead to Dismember Battle Rage. Wait, did they do that wrong? Yeah, they did that wrong, right? Okay. Well, Bob punted. Uh, yeah, that's Darmagrave. I'm holding these lands because if we ever draw a Jeskai Ascendancy, we can loot through some of them. For people that are wondering why I'm holding lands. I think I just have to double block here, right? All right, well, Bob, Bob's punt made up for our flooding. We had a Mirian Crusader coming too. All right. All right, all right, we're three, three and one. Lost our one match to mill. That sideboard plan seems really fucking good. <laughs> that sideboard plan seems great. A, A plus aces, if you would. Thanks everyone for hanging out here tonight. This next match is gonna be my last match of the evening. I really do appreciate it. Remember, if you didn't catch all of this league or any of the other leagues, we've played like, I don't know, six, seven, eight hours of Magic today. Check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. Everything is, is live there almost. Yeah, the Mystic Enforcer just like punched the clock and went to work. I think of Cheerios and Modern. I was pretty unimpressed with it. We actually played it pretty recently. You can check it out on my YouTube channel if you want to see us play through it and like things we felt were good, bad, or otherwise. This hand's great. Needs another land, but it's pretty good otherwise. It's 
Temple Garden, okay. Land. Tilt. And if we miss a land next turn, I probably just cast Sylvan Carry added. And if we hit a land that lets us cast just Geist Tendency, obviously we'll just do that. For the good clean turn, turn three kill next turn. <laughs> MTG bot is behind for some reason. I don't think they can kill us this turn. Guess we'll find out. I think it's pretty big, pretty fast. Another turn, ethereal armor might make this lethal. It'd be plus. Guess we'll find out. Oh shit. Oh no, wait, I have. I have Fate Stitcher, so they should still be dead here, I believe. Oh, I need a one mana spell, right? I need a one mana spell. I've got two draws at a one mana spell. Crap. Um, oh, wait. I can Glittering Wish for a one mana spell, right? So I do this. And if we miss on this loot, I can Glittering Wish into a one mana spell, potentially. <laughs> oh, one of the problems here is I only have. I only have one more mana of any color. I only have green and blue mana to make on. This might actually be a tight, a tight, a tight race here. All right, so I'm discarding Fate Stitcher. Then I get to choose a card with this. I'm really gonna have to think about what we're doing here. So how are we winning this game? So I can get Scar Scale Ritual and then my island puts Fate Stitcher into play. My Fate Stitcher untaps my Gemstone Mine. My Gemstone Mine casts Silence. I loot away this other Fate Stitcher, but then I only have... So, I do this. I untap, I, I can't tap this off of this. I do this. I cast this, it untaps this one. I do this, it puts this into play, but then I'm in trouble if I don't so I need to hit a one mana spell on this loot effect, basically, or I'm gonna lose. I can hit a land too, right? A land lets me do it, because I haven't played a land drop yet this turn. I don't think I can kill the core. I could get wear tear, but then like I can't really do anything. Like, I'm gonna get scar scale ritual here, and I think, I think it's pretty, we need a one mana spell or a land. You need know, a one mana spell or a land tier. So I go ahead and I untap this. I don't have two mana to cast those spells. So I need a one mana spell or a land tier. Okay, that should do it. So I get to untap this. Oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't do it because I don't have, I don't have white mana. I need to be more specific. I needed a one mana spell that I could cast off of a blue, a blue source. I need to be able to cast it off a blue source. Yeah, we're gonna die because they had the path. This leaves at end of turn. Yeah, it's not the right color. All right, maybe they won't kill us. <sighs> Statistically dead, they just need like what, one aura? We're not dead on board, but we're very likely dead. Could have bought another turn by silencing their upkeep. That's true. 
We could have silenced in their upkeep and then untapped and done it the following turn. Yeah, that's a good line. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, we're dead. But I, I could have silenced during their upkeep. I wanted to try and kill them that turn was the thing. And I, I didn't have to. I could have waited a turn because I had this other Fate Stitcher. But then we exposed ourselves to another Path to Exile as part of the problem. Part of the problem is that exposes us to another Path to Exile. But I don't know, maybe that's worth the risk. Killing one of the enchantments means we're likely still dead. So I think, I think grabbing Wear Tour is a play-to-lose line. There might have been merit to silencing them because they'd already played one path and they probably only have three paths. They have most, at most three more paths in their deck, right? I definitely think... I think going for it was right. What do we... How many, how many hits did we have there? We had... Well, we had three lands out of our deck, so that was 13. And then I had... Um, I'd already played one of these. So we had 13... We had 29 cards that killed them there. I think we had 29 cards that killed them there, so I think I stand by the line that I took. Fetch Temple Garden, play Bird on one. Yes, that is... It, I, I agree, Zombie. This is a... It's like someone asked me, like, how can you like playing this deck if you don't like playing Storm? This deck is a puzzle box. Like... This deck has so many different things going on, and there's a lot of non-obvious, unintuitive lines that come up, and the more I play this deck, I feel like the more I'm learning and getting better with it, which is what I'm looking for, right? Like, I play Magic to solve puzzles, and, like, this deck is a box of puzzles. I mean, I'm gonna ban you because you're an idiot. Like, that matchup was literally decided by my opponent's path to exile. Like, we literally lost the game because my opponent interacted with us. Like, I boarded in cards to interact with my opponent. So, like, the, the, again, the answer to what we were supposed to have done that last game, it's like, what's more likely? Is it more likely that my opponent has another path, or is it more likely that I... Um, what's the word I'm searching for? So I'm gonna bottom this land, but top of this bird in case they path this bird on me. Although I guess if they path me, yeah, I should have bottomed that, because if they path me, I'm just going to, um, I'm just gonna shuffle my deck anyways. This deck's super cheap on Magic Online. Like, the 75 cards I'm playing right now are $144 before my discount code on, on MTGO Traders. I don't know. It's probably pretty cheap in paper, too. So topping this bird was wrong. It was a mistake on my part. Now we have to loot through it. Hopefully we don't brick off. We're looking for Manamorphos is a good hit. We need like Cerulean Wisp or Noxious Revival. Serum Visions and Sleight of Hand. Both of these are probably fine. Yeah, both of these are fine. So I'm gonna go top, top. Abundant Growth on this one. One of the things that is a little expensive about this deck is that um, Misty Rainforests are not optional. You need you need to have Misty Rainforests for this deck. Na it's unfortunate that we drew Nagging Thoughts there because that means that uh, we can't we can't discard it yet. I think I'm gonna discard this Glittering Wish. We're looking for a Cerulean Wisp or a Noxious Revival. And again, the reason why I'm looking for Cerulean Wisp or Noxious Revival or Fate Stitcher is because my bottleneck right now, this game is mana currently. So I want to be able to generate more mana than I have. And those are the cards that let me generate additional mana off one creature. I could actually brick and die here. Hopefully that's not what happens. Yep, yeah, we're going to brick. Yep, we bricked. Okay. Um, Fate Stitcher is pretty good, though, right? So we'll go top, top here. That means we don't lose to a... We don't lose to a piece of spot removal now. 
So hopefully they don't deal 11 to us this turn. They could deal 11 to us this turn. If, if they do, that's like, you know, is what it is. They only have two cards, so hopefully not. They need probably need like Umbra Umbra. They could have like a disenchant for our ascendancy as well, though, which would be bad for us. All right, so I'm gonna start by casting Serum Visions here. We know we have a, oh, 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 I missed a mana, that's fine. We have plenty of mana now. Mana, mana is no longer our bottleneck. Mana, mana is no longer the bottleneck this game. When it concedes. All right, yeah, you're probably done. Uh, yeah, you're correct. You're correct, cousin. You're right. Vision sooner sets up the other things. All right, I think I'm just going to submit here. Pretty happy with how we boarded, I think. This is going to be my last game of the evening. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. I'll be live again tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I'll be up with a, another long stream tomorrow evening starting about 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do appreciate it. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday afternoon. If you enjoy what you see and you're new, make sure you hit that follow button. If you're really enjoying what you see, please consider subscribing on Twitch. It's the absolute best way you can support my content here. And as a final self-plug, make sure you check out the YouTube channel after the fact. Tons, hours, days worth of magic content on there, all broken up by decks. So you can find just the stuff that you care about. Um, hmm. I feel like this is probably a mulligan. Noxious Survival isn't particularly good in this matchup. It's hard to pass up a turn one bird, though. I guess I have an opt and a mana morphos. Like, oh, like this deck's so tough to mull. I feel like most of your hands are keeps with mana creatures, just because like there's so many cantrips in this deck. It's like, well, my opening hand could kind of be anything. I think I'm gonna lead on my gemstone mines here, and the reason is, yep, nope, well, we hit the hit the nuts. All right, um, we could actually, God, this would be a great one to close the hand. If they don't kill our bird here and they just like suit up and attack, we could potentially turn to them. This is these are the hands you need to turn to them. Yeah, I don't care about that one. Oh, I do care about that one because I can't Noxious Survival now. That's a tilt. That's kind of a tilt. I was like, I don't care about that. Wait, I do care about that because it means I can't Noxious Survival. Huh. Do I just want to go get Wear Tear? I think I want to just go get Wear Tear, right? And like next turn, play Just Guy Ascendancy. It's not a free man. It needs a target to cast it. You don't have to worry about discard spells out of them, so I think this is fine to just wait here for a second. No, rest in pieces, cards in both graveyards. All, all graveyards are empty. Yep, that's fine. All right, so likely they're likely dead next turn. And actually, I can save this wear tear for while I'm comboing, right? Because the wear tear is free since it only costs one mana. Yeah, so I get I get loot if I if I wait with that. Yeah, so I'm just gonna untap here. Yep, yeah, so I have the land. So this is white, blue, red. Cast this. Cast wear tear here, trigger. Um, hmm. 
This is interesting. So Noxious Revival nets me a mana, which is kind of appealing. So I think I want to keep that, and then Mana Morphos will net me another mana. So I think I want to bin up tier so I can get my mana count up because mana might be the... I don't know yet if my bottleneck's going to be mana or if my bottleneck's going to be cards this game is the thing. Need to kind of get set up here a little bit. I think op's the right discard there. No, I think sleight of hand's better. It gives me more control over what I'm seeing. So now this... So I net a mana with Noxious Revival by doing... Do I want to net a mana already? I probably don't. I'm just going to sleight a hand here first to see what we get. I can dig a little bit deeper. Maybe find a... Because remember, if mana's not my bottleneck, I don't want this Noxious Revival. If cards are my bottleneck, Noxious Revival is minus a card. Okay, so now, now I need to go ahead. So I'm going to make blue here. And then I'm going to go ahead and Noxious Revival, target the Sleight of Hand, paying health. So this doesn't cost me mana, but it triggers the Jeskai Ascendancy. Now I get to loot. I have this bird that's a free discard. I'm going to make another blue here. Play the Serum Visions. Um, I'm actually not going to loot here. Because I know there's a sleight of hand on top of my deck, and I kind of want... Yeah, we're looking for a nagging thought, so we're looking for a wish at this point. So I'm going to decline to loot, because I know there's a sleight of hand on top of my deck for my Noxious Revival. I'm going to bottom... I guess the Mana Morphos... No, they don't actually generate mana for me at this point, right? Okay, yeah, they don't actually generate mana yet because I don't... Well, they, they get one mana, right? Because I cast it, and then it makes two, and it untaps my thing. All right, yeah, they, they technically net one. Wow, that's bad. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cast this Mana Morphos now. The non-zero chance we brick here. Get to loot. Okay, another mana morphos. That's okay. So you get to make probably blue green here. Another sleight of hand. I think I want to just morphos. Like get out of the woodwork on being tight on mana. Don't need an abrupt decay. Make green mana, make white mana here. Yeah, we do. That is correct. Double fate stitcher. All right. Well. Fate Stitcher is actually not very good in this matchup outside of making mana because it can't attack in. <laughs> we, need a, we need a way to draw cards here. We need a Nagging Thoughts or Glittering Wish. All right, and mana is not actually our bottleneck at this point, so I'm not going to bring the Fate Stitcher back since it doesn't have any meaningful impact, right? Well, I guess it's not really doing anything else. I get two shots here. All right, let's bring it back. I guess we're actually not that far off, right? Oh god, I had to say that, didn't I? <laughs> All right, I get a uh, yeah, one more chance here because I can I can loot off this uh, abrupt decay. God, we actually bricked. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Well. Wait, did they just not block? <laughs> Why didn't they block? They didn't block. All right, we four won. We lost. We, we shouldn't have won that game there. They should have. They should have blocked. But they didn't. Welcome to Magic Online, I guess. Um, we lost to Blue Blackmail. God, that was exactly the card we needed to. We were one card. What, whatever. Whatever. Bogles, you know, just return to details. All right. I like this deck a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, this deck's fun. We're going to play this deck more in the future. We lost. We conceded a match to. We conceded a match to Mill because we were just never beating that. But this board plan felt great against the Shadow Deck. I'm gonna need to test that some more. The Mystic Enforcer, Mirian Crusader, Chameleon Colossus plan seems real. I'm really happy with this main deck. If you want to read more about this deck, GatheringMagic.com. My article is going to go up tomorrow morning about 10 a.m. If you're one of my Twitch subscribers in my subs Discord, there's an article preview about it. I think I would run this back card for card, honestly. Um, one of the things you can tune for your local meta with this deck is if you expect more Grixis Shadow, play all Chameleon Colossuses. If you expect more five color and Tarmogoyf Shadow and Tarmogoyf decks, play more Mirian Crusaders. So like, I'm expecting slightly more Tarmogoyf, so I'm playing more Crusaders. Yeah, my article tomorrow will be talking about um, how to sideboard with the deck. Just general general overview. So, um, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment on that article and stuff like that. So, uh, I will catch all of y'all tomorrow morning with some more streaming. And uh, thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. Remember, if you didn't catch all of this league, it'll go up on my YouTube channel shortly. So, peace, folks.